Uh, welcome to the chapter 4 videos for Math 120 and uh, we're just going to click through here. Some of these are going to be slides and then I hope to be able to get some links up um, for you to play around with some applets later. There's some nice visuals that you can um, play around with on this one to help you understand some of the big concepts we're going to be learning. So, um, the first section, 4.1, we're going to introduce a new diagram called a scatter diagram and a new statistic called correlation. So by the end of this lesson, we'll be able to draw those diagrams, talk about what this linear correlation coefficient is, uh, and then estimate it and compute it. Um, and then we've talked about this already, the difference between correlation and causation. We'll talk a little bit about that again. So a scatter diagram. Um, let's say we're looking at a bunch of students and we've got the credits that they're enrolled in this semester. So just one dimension, one variable, um, and each student, each one of those dots represents a student. Let's say we want to add an additional variable, a second variable, uh, the average hours that that student works per week. Well then what we can do is basically create for each student there's going to be a y coordinate. And there might be some relationship, I'm kind of making this up here, These are this isn't real data that I've collected. But each student then has two values. They have the credits that they're enrolled in this semester and the average uh, number of hours that they work per week. Um, and so each one of those points represents an individual now. So each individual has two numbers. Bivariate data is what this is called because we have two numbers. So when we talk about a scatter diagram, the horizontal axis is our predictor or explanatory variable, and then our y-axis is the response variable. And there's different types of relationships. Uh, this one that I kind of made up, pretty linear, not quite a line, but reasonably linear. Uh, but there are nonlinear relationships that might be some type of curve, and then some variables don't have any relationship at all. And so here are a few examples. You can see that one on the top left um, looks pretty linear, maybe a positive slope. The second one, negative slope. Um, on the bottom left over here, this one, well, looks um, like there's a pretty strong relationship there, but it's not linear. It's a kind of a curve on that one. And then the bottom right, really no relationship on that one. Those, um, they're just kind of scattered there. They're, looks like just thrown on a board. All right, so we can describe those first two as a linear relationship. That third one is nonlinear. It is a relationship, uh, but there it's not a linear. And then the last one is no relationship. So when we talk about when we have a linear relationship, we can have a positive or negative, and this alludes to that slope that I was talking about. When they're positively associated, it's like they have a there's a positive slope. So from your angle, that would be this way, positive slope. Uh, kind of doing things backwards there. Uh, and so a negative slope then would be uh, down left to right. Just like, um, so negative association is just like a negative slope, just like we would think of for lines. So here we've got some examples. Some of them pretty strong association here. Uh, and then a weaker association as we go to the right. Um, and so one thing we may want to do is, is to kind of get some numerical measure of that. How could we measure that strength? How could we quantify and give some number for this that's clearly higher than the number over here, even though still kind of positive on that one on the right, but not super positive. So, so we want a way to, to quantify that. And what we do is we introduce this variable called the linear correlation coefficient. Uh, we're not going to be doing this by hand. Um, like some of the other calculations, there might be one or two in your homework where you're doing these, uh, the pieces of this formula. But on the test, we're going to be using StatCrunch. That's what it's for. You know, anybody who's doing this out in the field, nobody's doing it this way. So we want to know what it's coming from, uh, but we're not going to do it by hand. Uh, you might see here, whoops, if you look at this formula, hopefully you recognize the pieces of this. What this is actually doing is multiplying two z-scores and finding the product of the z-scores and then adding all that up and dividing by n minus 1 and that gets us our linear correlation coefficient. Uh, we usually just refer to that as the correlation. So what's interesting here is it's always between negative 1 and 1. Um, a positive 1 means it's a perfect positively sloped line and then negative 1 would be a perfect negative linear association. Everyone is right in line. It's not saying the slope is 1. 
The slope can be any slope, but they're perfectly in line. Um, and then the closer they are to that positive or negative one, the stronger that linear relationship is. This is important here. This isn't saying the stronger the relationship is. This is this R only is linear correlation coefficient. So if you get something that's zero, doesn't mean they're not related. It just means they're not linearly related. All right. So let's see. Let's use. Let me see here. I think. Whoops. Let me see if I can get. Uh, stack crunch open. Oh, I don't have it open here. Um, oh boy. I had to turn my Wi Fi off earlier and I'm disconnected now. So there's a set of data, ACT and Compass. Uh, this is actually data from ECC. Uh, I have a set of 100 students. Um, it's actually from a much larger data set, and I randomly selected, I assigned a random number to each student. Um, and of course, now I can't get Wi Fi. Hold on. Let me try ECC wireless. Um, so I assigned a random number to each student, and then I sorted them from least to greatest, and um, just picked the first 100. So that was the way that I um, got 100 random students from this data set. So let's try again. Am I connected to the Wi-Fi? Come on. ECC Wireless, you're screwing up my video. OK, I'm in. All right, so my stack crunch. Uh, groups and here is our group and then we have this ACT and compass it should just be two columns so here are our two columns and um, we can create a scatter diagram so if we go to graph we call it a scatter plot in stack crunch and our X will be the ACT math and Y is the compass algebra test that's our placement test uh, that we've been using for the last couple decades um, and then ACT, you've all had the ACT, they have little subscores uh, in different areas, so math is one of the subscores. So if we hit compute, oh, there's a lot going on there. Certainly not a perfectly linear relationship, so it's interesting that higher ACT math scores don't necessarily mean higher compass scores, but it's a you know relatively linear if you look at that graph. I mean, generally higher scores mean here but you've got some low ACT math scores that are reasonably high compass scores so it's not really clear how strong that relationship is so what we can do I think I'm gonna have to close this is go to stat oh let me see if I can remember this Oh, regression there we go and we just want to do simple linear regression and we're going to do ACT as our X and compass as our Y. And then I think what I want is I just, oh, what do I want? See, I don't know that this is what I want. I thought this was it. I don't think so. Yeah, there it is. So that was, hold on, let me do that again. So that was it. All right, just, there's a lot of other stuff here that's kind of above and beyond what we're doing now. Some of it we'll do later this um, chapter. Some of it we won't do at all. So what I really just want is I want that correlation. So this is going to give us a lot of stuff. This linear regression is going to give a lot of stuff. There's a hypothesis test here. We're not going to worry about that right now. There's some prediction. We can do that later. There's some other fitted lines and save all this. And I'm just going to skip all that for now and just hit compute. And hopefully you can see here there's a few different things going on. But all I really wanted right now was this R, correlation coefficient. So about 0.45, which seems to confirm what we were saying. It's not great. Um, it's not 1, but it's not 0. So there's some correlation there. And that's what that correlation does for us, that R. Um, uh, there we go. Um, what that statistic does is it gives us some measure of the strength. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get YouTube to put this link up here. I'm not going to go through it right now. Um, this is in D2L. This applet is there. Uh, you can open that up and guess. You can click. Um, I can just do it now to kind of show you how it works, but I'm not going to do a bunch of them here. But you can click that you want a new sample. It puts some points up there, and you can guess what the correlation is. So this looks, well, I don't know, it looks kind of, it looks better than the one we just did. So I'm going to call 0.6. Oh, it's only 0.5. 
So a new sample, maybe that one's 0.6. Does that does doesn't that look stronger than what we just did? Oh, 0.7. Underestimated again. So you can um, estimate. Just click uh, new sample and keep trying a few of those, and that'll really give you a good idea of uh, what correlation means and what certain correlations look like. So I think that is it. Yep, that's it for uh, section 4.1.